dial in and get our focus back. Uh, so the quarter was not who we want to be. Uh, of course, we missed shots and got some good looks that didn't go, but, you know, they had the momentum. And, you know, to, uh, to allow a team 33 points in the second quarter, that's a huge um, uh, bonus, you know, as far as playing into the third. So the fact that we could respond the way we did, uh, you know, I think we held them 42 points in the second half. Um, we did a better job with, with Ingram late, but um, it was good to see that, that we could, you know, get back to who we, who we are and how we have to play. Uh, and we didn't go the other way. We didn't just throw in the towel and say, you know what, tonight's not our night. And um, you guys are now three and all, I think, without Brad this season, and the Wizards were two and ten last year without him. What do you think that says about your career? Oh, just, a, you know, it, it, just who we are. It's just our depth. And we talked about it at length in the preseason. At, at some point, our bench, our depth, um, you know, the wave of bodies that we can just keep playing is going to be a benefit to us. And we've seen it time and time again. We never want to be without Brad. <laughs> You know, no one wants to be without their best player. But the fact that we can withstand, you know, some stretches is great. Wes, I know you haven't been here, but you did when you got the job talk about, you know, re-engaging with the fans and everything like that. And it hasn't been a Monday night like that at Cap One in a while. With it's Monday. Tying, it's, it's Monday, right? Oh, yeah. I'm just okay. playing. <laughs> I was like, I'm, I'm equally as, as, you know, liable to be wrong. Um, with tying the second best start in this franchise's history, I mean, you could see what it mean out there. What did it mean to you? Well, it's great. I mean, I, you know, I think it's, yeah, the season's, <laughs> the season's still young. And I, I don't want to get overly excited. Uh, of course, we're, we're happy with where we are and, and for the most part, how we've played. But, you know, we don't want to get ahead of ourselves. I think it's, it's, uh, it's, good, it's good that we can win games like this and, and, and be in the situation we're in. But we still have a lot of work to do. And I, I think that's the constant messaging that uh, we're not going to just say, hey, we're, we're, we're good, we're, get complacent. Fall into that, you know, era of stagnation. You know, we, we got to keep growing, keep building. Uh, so I think we have, you know, broader plans. With Denny's performance in the fourth quarter again, can you just kind of help square the guy that we see who's very hard on himself and takes everything really seriously and the super kind of confident kid out there? Well, uh, it's it's validation for him. He's put in a lot of work in the fact Mala. that he's starting to, to get the ball. Anak, Garapolo, Ladibo, Samuel, down, Shlishi, Lefamim, Kakab. Like I was saying, uh, uh, the fact that he's, you know, it's starting to pay off for him. So you hopefully, you hope that, you know, he'll see that uh, his work is, is is paying off. Those those minutes will come, the opportunities will come, and his teammates are, will, will trust him. And he's shown time and time again that he's a reliable on-ball defender. Uh, with his size, his ability to move his feet, uh, he, he's got more discipline. Um, the physicality he brings, it's, it's a uh, really good thing to see. Uh, going back to the start, it's the best start that this franchise had since 1974. Um, just what does that mean to you? I mean, 47 years. <laughs> I mean, it, it's records are made to be broken. I don't know. Um, it, it's it's a good thing, honestly. It's uh, it's exciting, you know, and I think it's uh, a testament to this group. Uh, but you know, we we still have a lot a lot of games to play, and you know, if in 25 games and we're still sitting here and there's another mark or another benchmark, then that's great too. But it's a long season, and uh, we want to stay the course and continue to, you know, put in the time, put in the work. In the, the second quarter, you guys only scored 16 points. It was the worst quarter you guys have had all year. Yeah. Um, and then we saw what happened after that. What was it like in the locker room that happened? There was no panic. You know, I think, you know, th there's a lot of game to play at that point. We already realized that we hadn't played our best basketball. So let's flush that quarter. Let's get back to who we, who we are. And, you know, to their credit, they did. You know, they, they, they kept playing. We said, just just hit singles. No home, home run plays. We'll walk these guys down if we continue to do what we're supposed to do, defend, rebound, and get out and execute them. You guys are only credited with five turnovers tonight. I mean, obviously, that's a great number. But in terms of a game like this, when you have to fall back, I mean, how important is that to keep that possession down? And what did you guys do to, uh, to not turn the ball over as much? Well, I mean, I think we were just more organized. Um, you know, it helps when we, we can get quality possessions. Obviously, we had key stop after stop after stop. And then guys stepped up and make plays. You know, Trez had a stretch of, you know, he was great. And obviously, Spencer late. Denny defensively on the glass. Uh, and then Kuz comes in and knocks down two threes. Pope hits a big shot late. So it's like everyone had an opportunity to contribute, and they stepped up and did. Trez uh, has reached double figures in all 13 years. 
so many like pieces coming in and out of the lineup. But how much is his consistency there? It's been big for us. I mean, it's it's not just his consistency in production; it's the his his energy. And I know we've talked about that, but he, he brings that every day. Uh, so it's just the one thing that no matter how bad things are going, <laughs> you you're gonna have Trez. And you know, usually that that turns into positive things. Uh, his energy is infectious. Um, his energy on the glass, on the floor, his voice in the locker room. It's a steadying presence, which, you know, it's, it's, it's invaluable to have. I know you guys faced Giannis already. Valanciunas, I think, has like 20 pounds on him or something. He's kind of the first true, really, really big guy center you guys have faced. How do you feel like you handled that test? Is he comparable to someone like you might see, you know, like in an Embiid or in a, in a Jokic down the line? They're all different players. and I don't, I don't know if I'm doing it justice to compare them yeah. in, in that vein, but he is a big guy. And he carves out a lot of space. So, um, you know, I give Gaff credit. And obviously, foul trouble was an issue, not just, you know, with Gaff. But, you know, Brand Brandon Ingram is a problem. You know, his length, his ability to, to snake in the lane and, um, you know, elevate over guys. So being able to defend without fouling is huge. I thought, for the most part, d did a decent job, on, you know, on balance units. Um, so I got to give Gaff, obviously, Trez, a lot of credit. Came up with a play late. That was a huge stop. Wound up getting the charge. That's a momentum play. Um, it just kind of bodes back to his impact. What got Spencer Dinwiddie going in the third quarter? He had 14 points and four assists. We, we needed it, <laughs> honestly. And, you know, I think he he understands where we are and the flow of the game. And, you know, he, he took the opportunity to be aggressive. And he made that first layup, and I think it just kind of snowballed for him. This is the sixth time you've asked to help and your, 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 what do you kind of make of that? And, and is there something that, like, what impresses you the most about your guys? Well, I mean, I think the, you know, points per game is, is one metric. You know, it's more the uh, the net rating, you know, the overall defensive rating, you know, where uh, field goal percentage might, you know, get skewed a little bit with number of attempts. But uh, overall, all those things have been relatively positive. You know, they made threes, you know, pretty well tonight. I think they made 11, shot 50 some from three, but uh, for the most part, that our defense has been a constant, and I think that's uh, it's great to see because that's something that we preach, something that we harp on, and guys have bought into it. And the fact that it's uh, you know played out and, and won us a lot of games, so I think we have to just continue that to you know, stay that course, and that's got to be who we are. Focus on that rating, kind of shifted the past few years. When, I, when did it kind of click for you, or is it something that you when you started to look at efficiency management? Uh, and I think it's just. The more and more we're becoming educated on the analytics side of it, and I think it's changed dramatically over the last ten years. It's probably you know leapfrogged in the last five, um, just as far as coaches and their overall understanding of it. Um, so I give our guys credit. You know they they throw a lot of numbers at us, so it, it's constant you know feedback, and it's great because you can really dive into certain things. You know on the surface. Things may look a certain way. And then you really look into the numbers, and you're just like, well, maybe maybe that's not 100% accurate. Um, but I think overall, league wide, it's 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 been a uh, a useful tool. Mm -hmm. All right, we'll go to Josh. Thank you, uh, Wes. I know it's the players who make the plays and execute the game plan, but we're also learning uh, about you uh, through all this. Can you describe? how you communicated with the players when things weren't going well at halftime or during the first half in timeouts? How, what, what was your message and how did you deliver it? Um, I mean, del delivery is pretty much like I'm talking to you. <laughs> it's not over animated. Like, uh, they, they know, I, mean, I think they're aware of the situation. Um, you know, there, there's certain things we point out, hey, this, this, and this, we got to clean these areas up. We show the film, it's pretty self-explanatory, but it, it doesn't behoove me at all to yell and scream and rant and rant and rave. It, it, I don't know if that has any impact. Um, you know, I want to make sure that they understand what's what's going on and how we have to fix it. And then we have to figure out, hey, uh, some things we can do to you know change our energy in the second half. But uh, I think it's just easy. Have the conversation, you clean it up, stay positive, and you know they responded. If, if only we had we were flies on the wall in a huddle or a locker room, I think uh, all of us reporters it would make our jobs a lot easier. So I'll try. Good thing you can't read my mind. Uh, I can't. Yeah, <laughs> I can't even read my own mind. Um, anyway, uh, how many 
in a game like this, how many clips do you and your assistant coaches show at halftime to try to, to get your points across? It's a standard like five to seven. You know, we talk throughout timeouts, you know, try to clean things up on the fly. Um, those five to seven clips are positive reinforcement. They're clean up, they're teaching, um, and sometimes just pointing out the obvious. Like, this is not who we are, and this is not how we can play. Um, but like I said, you know, you have a quarter like that and that we had in the second. Our guys know. It's, it's no secret. I mean, it, it, it was plain and obvious that uh, we, got, we got outplayed. So they were dialed in. They were ready to respond. They did. Thank you. All right, last question to you, Ron. Um, hi, Coach. Uh, a couple of quick questions. Uh, um, you mentioned going for singles and not home runs. When, when you're doing, when you're telling that the players, uh, the, the international players understand that as well. Like you know, uh, Raul and Denny. That's a, that's a very good question. I'm not sure they do. <laughs> they, they they look at me nod and in agreement, but I'm not sure that, that they get that uh, reference. Okay, and more seriously on Denny, uh, we feel like uh, this might have been his best uh, game uh, this season for you guys, uh, both on both ends of the floor. Yeah, no, he was. Um, you know, and I, I think it's, you know, once again, he's just scratching the surface. Uh, I think every week we've seen it, you know, we see it play out. He's getting better and better. And I think he's getting more comfortable. And he understands that guys are, are trusting him to make plays, to be that defensive anchor. Um, you know, I think they, they, they believe in him. And I think he's starting to, you know, feel it and become more of a uh, more more confident in his own ability. So I think when that happens, it's just going to keep building, and uh, it's a it's a good thing to see. Uh, obviously, a, a tale of two halves for you guys. What, what changed for you guys in the second half? I think just the energy. Uh, we had a great talk in halftime, like we always do, and we just woke up. I think we flipped a switch, uh, which shouldn't happen from the beginning, but. We have great talent, great talent and, and great energy in our fellows and our guys. And, 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 I, and when we play together and we have that, that right energy, it's very hard to stop us. And uh, that's exactly what happened. You played really well tonight. You also played really well in the last game. Just what's been, what have you liked about the way you've played lately? I just like uh, I just liked me helping the team as much as possible. You know, being involved in, in in plays and big plays and crunch time for me, it's like it's really a dream come true. And um, helping the team uh, to win and be there for my guys, it's the greatest gift that I can get for real. Danny, we know you like the challenge of proving people wrong on defense. You might underestimate mm -hmm. you, but when Wes says, okay, you Giannis in the fourth quarter, Brandon Ingram in the fourth quarter. How does that make you feel? Um, it makes me feel like um, I get trusted. And for a basketball player to get trusted, it's the best feeling in the world. When people uh, trust you and you, you make a stop and everybody throwing the X, <laughs> it feels good. I mean, I'm just hoping to continue with it, you know? Now, I had a good game today. Sorry, two good games. And I'm just trying to keep it going, be there for my teammates, be there for the team. And we can do great things together, even like on low days or even in high days, we, we got to have the same energy. What's your approach on that one-on-one -on -one defense? Case Steve was saying he, it, it's not about matchups for him. He plays the same defense every single time. Kind of what, how do you do it? The heart is something that I have that since I started playing basketball is playing with passion, playing with my heart. I fight on the court and I bring all the energy and I rest good and we have a great coaching staff and um, trainer staff to help me and help the team recover for us to come to the court and get all our energy. So, I mean, it's, it's basically like the heart and like the discipline and the passion. It's all combined together. Is that something you've noticed with Wes, uh, just kind of the way that he's able to entrust or like trust guys and instill that confidence in them? Like, what have you noticed with them in that regard? I've noticed that he brings the best from everybody. And that's a um, thing that only great, great coaches has have and 
I think if he brings the best from everybody, we, like I said, we can do great things because nobody expects us to do great things, right? But we just want to keep it going. Of course, I want to give a big shout out to Bradley Beal that he was not with us and for personal reasons. And, you know, when we get him back, he's one of our best weapons. And I think also the injured players uh, will come back. And really, we're we're a great team. And I know you're still a young guy in this league, but you've been around a lot of coaches. How hard is it for a coach to be able to do that? Do what? Like entrust confidence. And you said like all the great great coaches have that. Like what? Um, it, it will sound funny, but it's the way they talk with you, and that I mean, there's a lot beyond that don't get me wrong but it's a lot of how the coach approaches you the team and it's something that it's very important and i think all our team are trusting wes so that's that's good trusting wes and trusting the coaching staff in general it's 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 a big part of a team of a winning team is to trust in the coaching staff and, and the coach so with all that has changed uh, about the rotation, injuries, guys being available, not available, how big is it, has it been to have Montrez Harrell reach double figures in all 13 games? Montrez is a, he's a, he's a different, he's a different animal. Um, throughout my, I've been, I've been playing pro since 16. Rarely I see a guy that comes every night to kill. He got he got a knife between his teeth for sure. So, and he and he comes at you and and you don't want to mess with him. So, that's good. All right, we'll go to Josh. Danny, uh, could you uh, teach us a few things, please? Uh, Can you? Who, no, <laughs> who uh, you mentioned that there was a lot of productive talking at halftime. Who did? the majority of the talking and, and in terms of coach, coach Un Unseld, how did he communicate? I'm sorry, it's not personal towards you, but I think whatever we speak in the locker room and whoever speaks in the locker room should stay in the locker room. Um, no. So I hope you respect it. It's nothing against you. It's just, I think it needs to stay between us. But I can tell you that the right people that are talking and really communicating are doing a great job. That's about it. No offense taken. I get it. Uh, Appreciate you. No, you say that now, but I'm going to ask the question now in a different way. <laughs> uh, when uh, when things when your team is not playing its best. How typically does coach Unseld respond? There you go. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so now I can tell you he's um he's never as I as I said earlier, he he's never too high and he's never too low. So whatever happens, even if for Leo we're 40 point down, he's still gonna have the same mentality and he's still gonna talk calmly. He he knows how to get us together and really approach us and get the best of us. So as I said, it's a big thing. Thank you. And thank you for the coaching. Thank you. Appreciate it. Go ahead, you're on. Uh, time for Hebrew questions. Uh, actually, we'll take one more from Neil real quick before we go to you, sorry. Neil. Hey, Denny. Coach was telling us that, you know, you were knocking on, I'm assuming, you know, Pat Delaney's door trying to watch film before the game. Is that something that you pretty much often do or is today something special? You're like, okay, I need to get extra film watching on Brandon Ingram. You won't understand the amount of film I'm watching either before the game or at home or the day before. I'm always getting ready for the next opponent as much as I can. 
seeing the players that I need to guard. And yeah, I mean, me and Pat has a re have a really great relationship. And, um, you know, knocking on the door, I was like, hey, Pat, what's going on? Like, are we watching extra film today? And he was like, yeah, sure, Denny. And we just, <laughs> we just watched film. <laughs> How I'm many sorry. hours per game do you think you watch a film? Damn. <laughs> More than I watch Netflix for sure, man. More than I watch Netflix, but um I don't know, I can't tell you. Thanks, Danny. Yeah. <laughs> you guys funny, man. Yeah. Because do you think you should be getting more credit than Kyle Kuzma for your fashion choices? Um, to be honest with you, man, I don't really care about that, man. Honestly, I, I tell people that all the time, man. My drip is whatever I feel like I, you know, look like when I come out the house. That's my fashion for today. I don't really um, kind of guess to measure up to what someone else has on or if I try to compete with them. I mean, I let people, you know, that, you know, that's their job kind of, you know, decide that for me. I don't really care. What was the turning point in the third quarter? Um, no defense. I think we really went back to the locker room and really understood what they was doing on defense and on the floor. Um, and we started executing the offense. I'm sorry. I said defense, uh, offense. Um, then that kind of transitioned into our defense, though, because we definitely started getting stops. And, you know, we came down and we started executing our offense. We started running our plays a little bit harder. And we started playing with a lot more um, energy than we had in the first half, really. Um, but definitely, like I said, we executed on the offense in the floor, which caused us to get out on the defense and get some great stops. We expect the really intense defense out of you night in and night out. Danny's getting the tough assignments as well, especially in the fourth quarter. What are you seeing out of him? Um, I mean, honestly, he knows exactly what he's doing. I mean, as far as the game plan, the concept of what he's trying to do um, and uh, what his assignment is coming in. I mean, you can have a guy that kind of get lost in the rotation and, you know, will kind of come in and not really know what to do, but he's not really like that. He's treating it as a pro and he's understanding the position that he's in. Um, and at the end of the day, man, they were doing it uh, as a collective group. Um, but it's really, you know, hats off to him. We're coming in, knowing his assignment, knowing what we're trying to take away and really making it harder um, for, you know, one of their best players to put the ball in the basket. So, uh, Best start for this franchise in 47 years since uh, 1974. What's your reaction to that? Um, <laughs> uh, I'm honestly um, tremendously honored be a part of it um you know but I gotta tell people like me um you know uh, my other leader uh Brad like we tell people we understand that we haven't done anything um it's definitely a good feeling to be where we're at it's definitely great for the city and for the organization um to be able to have just start and like I said 46 years which is a long time and you know um definitely be a, it's a great feeling to be a part of it with Brad with somebody who's been here for you know 10 of those 47 <laughs> plus years man so um, it's a, a huge and tremendous honor. Um, it's a blessing, but like I said, we understand we haven't done anything. So, and one thing that's defined the start is there's been so many people who are in and out of the lineup, but all the injuries, guys missing. Yet you've reached double figures in all 13 games. What's been the key for consistency for you? Um, just playing the game, man. Really, just doing all the little things. Um, you know, helping my team to win. Um, that's what I kind of built my reputation off of in this league. Um, playing hard, playing with energy. Um, but at the same time, I working on my game and working my tail off with my trainer, Rico Hines, and, you know, improve my game. And, you know, I know what I put in my game in the summer. I know I approach the game every day. Um, and, you know, that's playing it like it's my last game every time I go on the floor. So I just leave it all out there on the floor, man. And like I said, um, it's really just pass out to the coaching staff and to my teammates, man, and, you know, just finding me in different positions. But like I said, it's just playing with that extra energy, that extra effort, extra possession plays, man. It usually, you know, you get rewarded for it, really. And you seem to be really excited after you took that charge there in the second half. How would you describe that moment? Um, it's it's a um, a huge energy um, momentum swing for the game, man. Um, I think we was only up two points. Um, they won't, we knew that was kind of going to go at me and uh, go to Valentine's in the post. Um, you know, I was kind of split decision on if I wanted to take the charge or not because I tried to take one earlier that they really wasn't, you know, blowing the whistle for. But, you know, I took the bump and, you know, kind of knew he was going to try to, you know, go through me and stare around me because, um, you know, it's just his game. So, I, you know, 10 toes to the sideline, took the second bump to the charge. Hell of a defensive play, we go the other way. Um, and it started our um, run to, you know, close out the game. Like I said, man, it just goes back to doing all the little things and win the game. Um, I didn't think about me in that possession. I didn't think about, you know, trying to go for a home run play. Um, I went. 
you know, what the offense gave, which was, you know, two hard dribbles. And on that second dribble, I went down. Simple as that, brother. Just like I said, just trying to do all the little things to win. When you pound your chest like that after going down, I mean, does it ever hurt or do you ever notice how like, hard you're? Nah, I'm nah, but I'm a little bit different, man. I played football all the way up into my senior year of high school. Um, even in this basketball game, I played through physicality and the bumps and the had the time I end up on my head, you know, falling to the ground, man. So I don't really feel it. It's, it's the energy. It's the way I play. You know, I love it. Um, I'm a passionate player. You know, that's the only way I know how to play. And that, that's been the story of your career. And so is there, has there been a moment where people have tried to tell you to slow down? And is, is there a moment that people have stopped telling you to, to slow down because they realize that's who you are? Nah, man. Honestly, like I said, because my teammate, um, the building, man, everybody does a – you know, great job of feeding out the energy, man. As you can see, um, once I did it, once I, you know, took the charge and got up with the emotion and the passion that I had, man, you seen the whole arena just erupt, man. And that's what it's about, man. This, this is, we're playing for, you know, organization, we're playing for a city. And, you know, I got the the exact, you know, gesture response that I wanted from making a, a hell of a defensive, defensive play. Josh. Montrez, before the team started to play better tonight, what was Coach Unseld's message and how did he deliver it? Um, I mean, really, just like any other coach, man, we went back to the locker room at halftime and kind of talk about things that we wasn't doing well. Um, as far as our defensive coverages, um, we was giving up a lot of easy points um, with, you know, how they was running pick and roll. Um, but he went and basically just told us that, you know, we got to get more. You know, we got to do, you know, all the little things and, you know, play the right way. We don't need to go out here and try to, and get it all back in the home run play. Just keep, you know, chipping at it piece by piece away and stick it to our principles on what we do. And that's what we went on and did. In, in these 13 games, including tonight, many of your teammates have said he keeps a very even demeanor and keel. How important is that in a, a, a quality in a coach over an 82-game season? Um, I mean, I think it, it'll be big, honestly, because, you know, it, it's – he goes with the approach that he's not really going to get rattled no matter what situation that we're in. You know, he's going to be the even kill and level-headed person enough for our group. And, I mean, once you got a guy like that uh, who's the head of the stake, um, as far as coaching staff, um, you know, and the way things are being ran, man, you, you can't ask for anything any better, you know. Um, everybody has a different opinion. You know, some people feel like coaches shake or, you know, don't really know what to do in certain situations. But when you got a guy who's just that even kill and just that, you know, calm and collected, I mean, you really don't know, um, you know, what's on his mind, really. It's just like a one hell of a poker face to me, really. <laughs> Thank you. Neil. Hey, Trez. When you're at the free throw line and, you know, Capital One Arena starts chanting, you know, MVP, MVP, do you hear that in the moment? And yeah, I hate it. Yeah, I hate it. I hate it. I ain't gonna lie to you. I hate it. Don't chant it until the second free throw. I'm not gonna lie to you. I swear I hate it there. I hate it. Uh, if you chant it, give me to the second free throw because I swear that first one when I go up there, I start to get in my head like, damn, they're chanting MVP. What if I miss? Everyone I'm out and miss. So I'm not gonna lie to you, my brother. <laughs> I love it, but I hate it. <laughs> We'll have to relay that to the fans. Thanks, man. For man, just give me to the second free throw, man. Just let me get that edge off of getting that first free throw down, man. Because it, it definitely plays in my head. Like, damn, what if I miss this free throw? They change the MVP. And every time I don't fucking missed it. <laughs> Thanks, Trev. Yep. Last question to Wayne. Hey, what's good, Trev? Great what's game, up? man. I uh, just wanted to get your thoughts from, from coming down from 19 points. What were you most impressed about with tonight's win? Um, the way we kept fighting, man, honestly, um, the way we, you know, played and continued to fight, um, even when we was down, uh, you know, even going back to what coach said it in the game, man, most teams would have, you know, been okay with just laying down and just, you know, accepting that, you know, hey, it might not be our night, you know, we might just got to take this on the chin, but we didn't do that. We kept fighting, we kept competing, uh, we kept sticking to our game plan. We started doing our defensive coverage even harder, um, and we started moving the ball, swinging the ball making them rotate on the defense and the floor, and we knocked out some big shots. Um, Kuz came in and hit two big threes, man, and, you know, he hadn't seen the ball go in our game. He hit two big threes. Um, Danny came in and guarded his ass off from top to bottom. KCP hit some big time shots. Spence got it going, man. Gaff protected the rim for us, man. We did it as a collective group, and I think that was the big thing that, you know, we could definitely take from this game, man. Um, most people, like I said, would have came in and probably just laid down and just been okay with, you know, chalking this, chalking this one up as a loss. But we didn't do that. We kept fighting. We kept competing and came out with a big win at home. And we just want to carry this energy going on to these two-row games. 
And lastly, Trez, I know you said, you know, you haven't done anything, but to, to have the start you have, and then to know to have the fans behind your back, uh, what does that mean to you? Um, man, it's, it's a tremendous and, uh, you know, great honor. It's a blessing. Um, you know, it, it definitely helps me out a lot. Um, you know, with, you know, honestly, yesterday was a tough day for me. Uh, it was my grandmother's birthday, um, and it was really tough for me. Um, you know, I drove home and saw my family and, you know, was there, but I didn't really, you know, couldn't really go home and actually be at home. I want to, cause I still get that feeling. So, um, yesterday was a tough day for me, man. But even, you know, coming into the day, um, I talked to Brad earlier and just basically sent him a message telling him that, you know, we're here for him and that, um, you know, we have all the love in the world for him, man. And he responded back, um, you know, he's in great spirits and, you know, just to, be able to bond with another captain and another one of my teammates like that who is going through something as tough as that. And to, you know, basically let him know that, man, we're still here for him and, you know, we're still um, behind him 100%, man. I can't wait for him to get back, man. It just goes to show you that we're trying to change the culture around here. Um, you know, as far as the organization, as far as the city, um, as far as, you know, just the whole way the Wizards are looked at, man. And, um, you know, for us to do it in-house like that, and it's starting to pour on into the city, man. It's, it's amazing to me, honestly. So just to be a part of something like that, like I tell you every day, man, this is a place where, you know, they just love for you to come in, put your hard hat on and work. And, you know, that's what they were trying to, you know, show that we're here to do. What was the impetus in the third quarter for you guys to kind of make that switch? Um, just getting stops. I mean, obviously, Coach uh, singled out the, the last minute or so of the first half in which they had 14 points, really ballooned the lead, you know what I'm saying, from 6 to 17. Um, which obviously isn't good enough. And, you know, why we've been on this run is due to our defense. So, you know, getting back to that, I think they had, what, like like 60 points at the half, ended with 100. So it's a pretty good uh, second half defensively holding them to 40 points. You guys said earlier this season many times that you cannot be a team that just thinks it can flip a switch. But you've done that a couple times now. What changed between then and now? Or um, No, I mean, I don't think we're still a flip the switch type of team. Um, I don't think it was due to necessarily effort. I think we just, you know, were not executing, taking some bad shots, got them in transition. And remember, they're they're a young, athletic, talented team. Um, they, they may not show in the win columns, but obviously we gave some balance units, dunks, uh, B.I. got going, you know what I'm saying? So you can't give teams like that confidence and, and room to kind of be free because um, we're all NBA players. And like I said, they are talented, so they're going to put the ball in the basket. What do you – attribute that defensive turnaround to or what did you think you guys did well to like was it the paint taking away the three what do you kind of think quick for defense i mean i think every good defense does their job in terms of taking away the three and trying to limit the paint um i think we did a little bit better job of balancing uh, in the second half just in terms of the free dunks you know what i'm saying he wasn't getting those anymore um denny i think did a great job kind of shutting bi's water off a little bit making him work for for stuff he still got free throws but it wasn't um the scoring barrage that we saw um, and then that's going to, uh, you know, limit their three just in general, just focusing on those two things. Um, doesn't get them in as many uh, swing, swing and, and closeout situations. You had uh, 14 points in the third quarter. I think it was the first eight for the team. Uh, just what was your approach in that quarter? How did you get going so quickly? Um, I mean, same, same type of thing we talked about. Obviously, with Brad out, uh, you know, I'm going to have a more aggressive mindset in general. Um, wish I had to kind of start a little bit earlier. Uh, not let us get down like that. But obviously, uh, knowing our team, knowing the team we were playing, like they were going to give us a chance to to get back into it. We were going to have to do our job on both ends, and you know, just was fortunate to hit some shots. And what, what are you seeing in uh, Denny Avdia's development? It seems like these these last few games, in particular, has really kind of made a leap here. Yeah, I mean, I think he's uh, becoming a big time defender for us. Um, and I know as a young guy, like when you do some of the little things, you play defense, it's going to get you time on the floor, and um, you know that. Uh, along with, you know what I'm saying, just creating a rhythm, you'll start to score a little bit more. And that confidence will grow. You'll start to make more plays on offense. So, you know, I think uh, when the focus is in the right area, the way that Denny's has been, um, it allows him to now gain that confidence, gain that rhythm on the offensive end. You're going to see his kind of full game start to blossom a little bit. And I want to ask you about Trez's consistency, double figure scoring in all 13 games. Just mm -hmm. how big has that been, especially with so many guys in and out of the, the rotation? I'm um, huge. I, I think, uh, you know, obviously he's a junkyard dog, one of the rocks for our team, an emotional uh, leader for us. Uh, when his spirits are high and, and, and in the right direction, I mean, it's huge for our team. So, you know, his consistency is uh, big time.
you guys were credited with just five turnovers tonight. That'd be a season low. I mean, what was the key to protecting the ball tonight? And in a game like this, where you guys are trying to claw back from 19 down, I mean, how important is protecting the ball in on every possession? Um, it's huge. You know what I'm saying? Uh, like I said, with New Orleans, uh, they're a team that thrives uh, more so on a transition to half court. So you never want to take bad shots or, um, you know, have a have a lot of turnovers because that's how they're going to get, you know, those easy buckets. And, you know, when we talked about the last little bit of the first half, that's what we kind of saw, bad shots, maybe a couple turnovers here or there. Um, but, you know, going forward and, and if you look at the game as a whole, uh, we did a good job, especially in the second half of not having that. And then, like you said, five turnovers only. You limit their transition buckets, make them play in the half court, like give yourself a chance. All right, we'll go to Josh. Spencer, when the team is not executing as well as it can, uh, how do you describe Coach Unseld's uh, message and demeanor at halftime? Well, I mean, uh, he's not hes not a super demonstrative type of guy. Like, So it's not like he comes in there yelling and cursing and stuff like that. Um, but but he's very frank. Like, you know, we're, we're not good enough right now. Um, you know, he, like I said, he harped on the fact that in the last minute they had like 14 or so points. Um, and that's what gave them the, the gap they had going to the second half and that we need to stick to what got us here, which is our defensive principles and, and continue to plug forward and, and that they would give us a chance to get back in the game. But, you know, we weren't going to get it, uh, get it done the way we were playing. A lot of your teammates over these 13 games have remarked just how much of an even keel coach keeps over an 82 game season, how important is it for a coach to deliver a message even keeled fashion over the long haul? Super important, 82 games in what, six months or something like that. Like you're playing every other day. If you're always too high or too low, like, you know, it's, it's just stress, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you, you gotta look at stress, not just a, as a one-off, but cumulative. Like it's hard to continue to go up and down and up and down, like ride that roller coaster. Like it's virtually impossible, and and that that fatigue will set in. So you know, with with even with this win streak, I mean, obviously you don't want to get too high. Um, and to your point, like I think uh, Coach Huntsell does a perfect job of just kind of staying uh, the course. Thank you. Last question, Neil. Hey Spencer, you know, coach and everybody has been talking about, you know, resiliency so far early this season. When you guys are down 19, you know, how do you guys fight complacency to just, you know, give in, okay, it's, you know, not our night, you know, can't win them all. How do you guys just keep continuing to fight forward? We don't want team in the East, man. Like, why would you, why would you lay down and get that up? You know what I'm saying? Like, look at the group that we got. Trez, like, Junkyard dog, Coos, obviously, cast aside, Pope, same thing. Like, you know what I'm saying? My story is my story. It's, it's not like we got a bunch of people in here that are like, ah, don't worry, we'll get on the back end. You got a lot of people that, that are fighting for a lot of things. You know what I'm saying? Like, we, we earned this early in the season. Granted, it doesn't mean anything because we only basically 15 games in. You know what I'm saying? So it's, it's not like we can rest on our laurels, but like, why get that up if you got a chance? You know what I'm saying? And we, we look across that, that on that other side, like, there's no shots in New Orleans, but they were going to give us a chance. You know what I'm saying? Like, it's, it's on us to take it, though. So, you know, man to man, like, do your job and, and and give yourself a chance to take it. And, you know, if we went out there and we didn't hit any shots, but we played our behinds off on defense and we went into the fourth quarter, you know what I'm saying, still down 17 and then five minutes left, still down 17. And, you know, maybe it's just not our night. But, you know, you, you got to do – stick to your process and, and give yourself a chance at all times.